now we're in a new period of collapse of the U.S. dollar, and it's it's quite frightening. And it, it, it does mean that the dollar will be removed as the world currency. I mean, what will take its place, I think, is 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 still up for grabs. But the U.S. dollar has made itself as unattractive as it possibly can be uh, to world transactions. People are moving into all sorts of alternatives to the U.S. dollar, and, and they will and we will all move to a separate alternative regime in the global economy. Maybe Bitcoin, maybe gold, maybe some other set of currencies. But that is the direction we're headed. The use of sanctions and the weaponization of the U.S. dollar may be setting the stage for its eventual downfall. Concerns have been raised that a crucial turning point was reached when the Biden administration imposed sanctions on Russia and excluded it from the SWIFT system. This decision set in motion an irreversible trend of de-dollarization and the bifurcation of the global monetary system. Even Janet Yellen has acknowledged that the increased use of sanctions and weaponizing the dollar could lead to the world relying less on it, and we're witnessing that trend accelerate. The U.S. economy is veering off course, moving away from monetary stability and towards an increasingly precarious reliance on paper currency. The global community is taking notice, and there's limited time to address this troubling trend. This is the concern voiced by Art Laffer. Having served on President Reagan's Economic Policy Advisory Board from 1981 to 1989 and later advising President Trump, Art Laffer has been awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom for his significant contributions. He is the founder and chairman of Laffer Associates and the author of several best-selling books, including Taxes Have Consequences, an income tax history of the United States. According to the IMF, dollar reserves held by central banks fell to 58.4% in the fourth quarter of 2023, marking the lowest level in 25 years. In response, central banks have been buying gold at record levels while reducing their U.S. dollar reserves. China, for instance, sold off a record amount of U.S. bonds in the first quarter of this year, further intensifying its shift away from dollar-denominated assets. Japan, too, has been selling U.S. Treasury securities for several consecutive months. Laffer says the U.S. dollar is moving towards becoming an unhinged paper currency. He discusses de-dollarization, the implications of the weaponization of the U.S. dollar, and the competing global payment alternatives gaining traction, including Bitcoin and gold. Now, let's break down what this all means, of course, with Art Laffer. Before we continue, let's take a minute to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for more timely updates. Or if you remember in the 70s, uh, in the 70s, we did it with Russia as well. Uh, we had all sorts. I don't know if you remember Jimmy Carter precluding them from the Olympics and all the stuff. And it, it caused the euro dollar market to develop where world currencies could be operated outside of the political control of the U.S. government. The same thing you're seeing happening right now. I mean, the dollar has been made to be not a good international currency and people are moving into all sorts of alternatives to the U.S. dollar. And it's only natural. And these currencies, these the U.S. dollar specifically should not be politicized, should not be a weapon. And if you do going to make it a weapon, you're going to lose your control. We're going to lose the seniorage gains of the dollar in the world community. And they will and we will all move to a separate alternative regime in the global economy. Maybe Bitcoin, maybe gold, maybe some other set of currencies. But that is the direction we're headed exactly as you laid out. You, you, you hit the nail right on the head. And it's, it's just silly what my government has done on trying to use the dollar as a weapon. Dollar losing its status as the global reserve currency? Is that something in the next 10 years, 20 years? Do you have a timeline for that? Is, is that well, reversible? It, well, it never happens in one minute or one day. It's not one where a tipping point and then you fall like Humpty Dumpty from the wall. It's a gradual move away. There are some people who still deal in British pounds, Canadian dollars, they're, you know, rub rubles, whatever. Uh, but the U.S. has had the dominant role as the dollar was the global currency. It was set up in Bretton Woods in 1949, I believe, uh, in New Hampshire there, where the dollar was pegged to gold and every other currency was pegged to the U.S. dollar. And that sort of dollarization gold standard uh, prevailed for a long time. Then it was in 19... I think it was in 1972 that uh, we had the Smithsonian Accord. We got rid of the con any convertibility of dollars for gold at that time. And then we had the free floating dollar, which collapsed, as you'll remember, in the 1970s. It wasn't until Ronald Reagan and Paul Volcker came back in that the dollar resurged again. I think the dollar price of gold went from $35 an ounce to over $1,000 an ounce and then collapsed back down to $350 an ounce or something. But now we're in a new period of collapse of the U.S. dollar. And it's, it's quite frightening. And it, it, it does mean that the dollar will be removed as the world currency. I mean, 
what will take its place, I think, is, is, is still up for grabs. But the U.S. dollar has made itself as unattractive as it possibly can be uh, to world transactions. You may make the dollar trustworthy and you'll not have any of these problems. If the Fed said they were going to control the balance sheet and not allow a wild expansions of mon the monetary base, if you, if you saw the way we control go the growth of goods and services, so if people could reestablish credulity and faith and trust in the U.S. dollar, all of these problems you described will disappear. People would love to hold the dollar. They'd love to do transactions in dollars. The reason they don't want to do hold dollars, the reason they don't want to do transactions in dollars is because the dollar is being mishandled and being untrustworthy, and you're going to suffer capital losses if you go into dollars. No one wants that to happen, so they're moving into alternatives. If the U.S. is serious about keeping the dollar as the global transactions medium, they've got to make the dollar trustworthy and credible. And the only way they can do that is by controlling the growth in the monetary base and by making the dollar uh, uh, solid with regard to the U.S. economy and with regard to economic growth, period. There are mixed signals regarding the health of the U.S. economy. On one hand, reports indicate a relatively robust second quarter GDP growth of 2.8%. On the other hand, markets are beginning to show signs of strain and inflation remains a persistent issue. Additionally, a recent report from the New York Federal Reserve reveals a troubling trend. Americans now carry a record $1.14 trillion in credit card debt. This amount represents a $27 billion increase over a three-month period, from April to June, marking the highest level of credit card debt on record since the Federal Reserve began tracking this data in 2003. According to Art Laffer, the U.S. economy is currently struggling to regain its former strength and stability. He believes that addressing these issues will require a radical overhaul of economic policies, rooted in fundamental macroeconomic principles. Let's shift our focus to a video. I mean, if you look at what happened when Reagan came out of the recession there in the 19, early 1980s, from January 1st, 1983 till June 30th of 1984, that's 18 month period, that's six quarters, that's a year and a half period, real GDP growth. And that's exactly when the tax cuts took effect was on January 1st, 1983. Real GDP growth in that 18 month period was 12%. That, the U.S. economy grew at an 8% per annum compound rate for a year and a half. You know, we went from uh, just creating huge amounts of jobs, output and growth. After the pandemic, Michelle, you should have seen U.S. growth rates equal that, if not greater, uh, but they didn't. Uh, now, we have had a recovery from the pandemic. That's true. But we've never quite caught up to the trend line we had prior to the pandemic and all of these growth rates, 2.8%, 1.9%, you know, they're all tolerable. They, they, they all exist, they, but nothing there is exciting. Nothing there is something that will eliminate poverty, that will create opportunities for the inner cities, that will really bring resurgence back to the U.S. country. There is no evidence out there to suggest that anything's really, really happening well. Now, when you say the dollar is strong, the, the cleanest dirty shirt and the hapsack there. You're right if you're looking at currencies versus currencies. But if you're looking at currencies versus goods and services, it's about as bad as I've ever seen it. Right. I mean, the inflation rate hit 9%. <clears throat> if you look at the dollar and other currencies, I mean, when you think that we're the cleanest dirty shirt, and yet we had 9% inflation at its peak, mind you, but 2012, what is the price uh, percentage raise since he's gotten in about 20% uh, devaluation of the dollar during that period in terms of goods and services, uh, even stock prices, which have gone up in real terms, they haven't gone up. They've been flat for three plus years. If you look at that, uh, you know, you, you sit there and say that, you know, the dollar is really losing ground relative to the rest of the world, relative to uh, goods and services. And, and I don't think the dollar is doing well at all. And it's shown by the look at the price of gold. I mean, the price of gold is what? $2,400 an ounce, something like that. Now that's a troy ounce. Bitcoin, what is it? $50,000 per Bitcoin. That's a huge increase in the price of alternative currencies in the system. All of these are signs of senescence, of weakness, of, of fleeing the government policies. And to me, that's, that's not good. The only way of getting around this, of changing this, is with a radical revolutionary economic set of policies which have to come about in the five grand kingdoms of macroeconomics. That, that's where they come about. And I'll go through that if you'd like me to. The U.S. economy faces significant challenges as it struggles to regain its pre-recession strength. Despite reports of robust GDP growth in the early 1980s following tax cuts, 
The current recovery from the pandemic has not matched past performance. Growth rates remain modest, and the U.S. dollar, while relatively strong compared to other currencies, shows weakness when measured against goods and services, with inflation and devaluation posing concerns. Additionally, rising gold and Bitcoin prices reflect a lack of confidence in current economic policies. What do you think are the most pressing challenges facing the U.S. dollar today? We value your thoughts, so feel free to share them in the comments. If you found this content valuable, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to stay informed. Thank you for being part of this journey with us.